Hello, this is Damir for the Droid Effect and this is part 2 of my custom ROM comparison database. This is the features explained video. I changed my plans a little bit and won't go through the list with you because it would be just too cumbersome and too boring to watch the whole video me just reading the features and that's why I picked 11 one out which I will explain in detail. You will see a list up here somewhere in the video with a number and the feature name and I will always while explaining the feature have that somewhere at the bottom so you can see and look for the feature you, you want to see explained. Okay, let's start with the navigation bar. If you have the luck and your ROM has the AOKP navigation bar you will get up to seven buttons. You can assign every possible action, icon or app, whatever you want. There's practically no limit. If you have the CM one you get about four buttons with the menu, nothing special. So at least for me it's always preferred if I get the AOKP one because it's, because it's so much more powerful, has so much more options like the hidden nav bar where you don't have a nav bar, just slide up and you get it. That's the way better solution. But everyone has to decide itself which one he prefers. Okay, now let's talk about the AOKP navigation ring. You can select up to five targets of course again with short and long press actions. If you drag down from the navigation bar you get this ring like you know from Google and the norm normal Nexus devices and here you have all the actions that you simply access like that. It's pretty much the same as the normal Google now use but way more powerful because you have five plus long press actions. Okay now let's take a look at the Pi. The Pi can be enabled here and you have following options trigger size, gravity, style, the angle, the item gap and this is pretty much standard AOKP but if you have a all-in-one custom ROM with a lot of added features you also get extra buttons like show menu always search button, last app button, kill task button, the app window button or the power button you can see you have much more numbers but you also see they are getting much smaller and harder to access but the good thing is you can just enable or disable it like you wanted to. It's up to you. Now let's take a look of Halo. For the people who don't know what Halo is, Halo is Paranoid Android's answer to the notification system in a different style. You get this circle which you can drag everywhere you want and it hides on the side. And whenever you get a notification, you just hit it and the notification will open in a smaller, in a smaller part of the, of the window, not full sized you get different options like size, height, the activity, on some ROMs you get color options and there's some advanced options on some ROMs but not on everyone. I don't know maybe but that's because of the version number of the Halo itself or, or something like that. And then there's always Halo 2.0 now which will come soon with some few added new additions. It's just that if you want to have it away just click it and it's gone. The next thing would be the AOKP ribbon. The ribbon is very powerful and almost has no limitations. You have different ones. You have the lock screen ribbon, the notification ribbon, quick settings left, right, bottom swipe and also the application window. Let's just take the left swipe ribbon. Just real quick, this is the ribbon. You can customize it in various versions. You can change the drag handle, the length, the thickness, the opacity, the number, the animation duration you can see. Now, it, now it's very, uh, much quicker. You can change the style, the size of the icons itself. There's no limitations and you can just easily add new things to the ribbon. And they're there as soon as you save it, what I just forgot. You can see much more now. There's practically no limit. You can have it everywhere you want. Very powerful tool. Highly recommended if you are a fan of those swipe menus. The next big important thing would be the Paranet Android Hybrid Engine. You see you have the usual presets. You have PA colors, stock UI, phone UI and tablet UI. And what it allows you is pretty much change the DPI and layout of the tablet or phone to what you want it. You can always choose phone, tablet or phablet mode. You can change the size of the system's UI DPI the navbar, the lock screen, 
you can select the DPI or layout for the system apps as for the user apps you can change the colors and let me quickly show you what the DPI changes itself do if you open an app like Robert enter the paranoid settings and now you can change the layout which isn't possibly right here and just if you want it change the DPI to let's say 160 and you will see immediately the whole layout is way more smaller and if you have a high resolution device it's always very good because you see much more at once let's just change it back and you will see now you don't see at once that much and I, I really like this option because of the bigger screen real estate and it allows much more and once I have the new Nexus 7 I think then it when it will be really fun to change the DPIs. That is possible for every single app for the whole system UI everywhere. Really awesome feature. The theming engine can be explained very quickly. In normal Windows you only have this system theme, that's it. But if you have a theme engine compatible ROM, you can just download in the market or an XDA wherever you get it a theme, apply it and the whole system will change the complete look like you see now it's not black anymore or something like that it changes whenever you want it let's get back and all the tiles and everything even apps mostly get changed A very useful and very nice way of customizing your design of the Android itself very easily and quick the next point would be the dark UI. The dark UI can be explained also very fast. This is the normal view and if you hit dark root box which is the same as the dark UI you see the background gets black. That's also true for the Google apps, some native apps and even some other apps depending on how much they integrated the dark root box. You can change the whole design to a way more darker look. That's especially very useful for AMOLED displays or if you just like the black look. The next thing would be the list view animation and the list view interpolator. A very recently added feature, very awesome, I like it very much. If you get a ROM that has it, you will really see what I mean. Let's check it. You have options like wave, scale, alpha, stack, unfold and translate. And for the interpolator you have some like accelerate, overshot and bounce. What it does is pretty easy to show. Open an app and if you scroll you see I have scale now and everything gets squished. This can easily be changed. Just check unfold and you see it behaves completely different. This animation works everywhere where we have the usual Android animations. It, it practically works everywhere. YouTube, Gmail, your Explorer, everywhere. I really like it a lot and don't want to miss out on it everywhere. Okay, now let's take a look at the quick settings. If you have an all-in-one ROM like Rootbox or something like that, you forget even all the free options which is very the best solution at all because it gives you the most customizability of all. If you check the tiles, this is the normal view. You can change it from 3 to 5 toggles per row you can see that like here you can change toggles that's the usual one you also get the traditional one this will take a few seconds to load personally this is the one I would prefer but on some ROMs the hybrid toggle has some problems still I hope this will be solved pretty soon okay this at the top are the traditional ones what you see down below is the power widget from from CyanEngine mod. That's still an old relic. I don't know why they have that even here. For, for some people who don't like the tiles maybe. But if you have the traditional AOKP ones, they are much more powerful because you have a lot more of them and they are much better customizable. Okay, the next thing would be the notification shortcuts. What is notification shortcuts? Pretty easily explained. Turn it on. You can choose your number of shortcuts you want to use from 4 to 16 here you can choose them pretty easily and down at the notification you have them they are always accessible as soon as you access the notification panel you can easily choose every app 
pretty nice way if you want to access your apps but don't want to have them anywhere else but still available. The last point of my features explained section would be the kill all button which you can see here and the recent RAM bar. The recent RAM bar shows you the RAM you have left. You can choose this for apps but also for cache and other stuff. And what the kill app button is, does nothing else than killing all your apps that are currently running. Pretty nice way to get rid of them instead of manually having to do it. Okay, this was my features explained video. I hope you liked it. If you have any other features you saw in my database and don't know what it is, feel free to leave a comment and I'll see what I can do about it. If you like the video and the features explained, give me a thumbs up and subscribe my channel.